MMA fans, I'm back to do my UFC 124 St. Pierre versus Koscheck 2 predictions taking place this Saturday from the Montreal, Quebec, Canada from the Bell Center. I was about to say from the Montreal, Quebec, Bell Center in Canada, but that wouldn't have been correct. From the Bell Center in Canada on pay-per-view, going to work my way from the bottom of the main card all the way up to the top like I normally do, and I will do my best to try to make sure I get uh, the preliminary card, my picks on those in the description side. So let's go ahead and work from the bottom all the way up to the top. Tiago Alves versus John Howard. John Howard, uh, Muay Thai practitioner. Um, at this point, I believe he's either a purple or a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Has a decent top game. Has improved with his boxing. Good leg kicks. Um, he's very, very good uh, in clinch situations as well. Um, using short elbows in some of his fights. Um, <clears throat> You know, interesting guy. Um, he's you know last loss uh, in his last fight he lost to uh, Jake Ellenberger um, via a third round TKO. Um, so you know some of his other most notable wins. You know uh, if you look over his resume, um, you know a win over Dennis Hallman, a win over Tamden McCrory before McCrory was cut from the UFC. But uh, he's gonna have a tough test with Alves. Um, Alves, you know a Muay Thai practitioner himself, um, very very good um, leg kicks. You know, he really, really just digs in when he throws those on either on the inside or the outside. Good hands. His boxing has always been a um, pretty good strong suit with his counter uh, counter striking. Um, himself, he's a uh, brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, good top game, just like Howard. Primarily, that's where he's the most dangerous is with his top game. Uh, this is an interesting fight. Both of these guys are very, very explosive. They both have good hands. Um, but I, I really think this fight comes down to... Um, you know, the stage and what is being set, and what I mean by that is that this is John Howard's biggest test to date, and against a guy that is one of the premier um, uh, fighters, one of the top echelon fighters at 170 pounds in the UFC, um, and in mixed martial arts in general, I think Howard is going to have a tough time with Alves. I think he'll be able to hold his own, um, but I just think that it, Alves is going to be too much for Howard. I think Alves has um, a little bit of... Um, you know, the better counter uh, boxing and the counter striking uh, as opposed to Howard. And I think Alves is going to take this one. I think he is going to catch John Howard, I think, in the second. I'm going to say either the second round or late third round. Late second, early third round with a TKO. I think Alves, again, I think he's just the better counter fighter. I think he has um, just a little bit more tools than Howard has uh, with his striking. And I think he's just going to, you know, tee off with the leg kicks and throw Howard off a little bit. Uh, with his his timing, and I think it's gonna you know play a part in this fight and not allow Howard to uh, set up in the pocket. So that's my pick, Tiago Alves, late second, early third round TKO. Uh, on to the next fight, Mac Danzig versus Joe Stevenson. Mac Danzig, um, you know, good grappler uh, from the bottom and the top. Um, good boxing, very very quick, explosive, decent cardio. Um, he has improved with that uh, from the past. Um, you know, didn't used to be known for um, you know, some of the tendencies with his cardio, but has improved with that. His cardio is uh, pretty good. Uh, he's taking on Joe Stevenson, uh, black belt Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, good wrestling. Uh, you know, his boxing has improved, good in the clinch. Uh, he's able to do very well with setting up the one-two combinations and setting up clinch situations. So, um, I really think this fight, uh, Joe Stevenson does have the advantage in most of the areas. Um, one with the wrestling, two. Um, you know, he has improved with um, being able to work inside of the pocket and capitalize on when an individual is overcompensated uh, or overcommitted and either going for a takedown or initiating a clinch situation. I think Danzig is going to be a difficult uh, guy to stop. Danzig is a tough individual. Um, he's taken beatings throughout his career. I think Joe Stevenson will take a decision in this one. Um, and it may even be a close decision. Uh, I think this one will have some uh, interesting ground scrambles, especially with some of the grappling. But I think uh, Stevenson will do enough uh, to win a decision. I'll go ahead and say it's a unanimous. I think that Joe Stevenson will at least take two rounds in this one. Um, be able to do enough on the feet inside the pocket. Um, don't be surprised, though, if Danzig you know, um, is able to do well uh, with some of his boxing and, and counterpunch and be quicker than Stevenson. Uh, but I think Stevenson just has... Um, you know, 
the good one-two combinations. He's able to set up either takedowns or clinch situations, and I think that's going to be a problem for Danzig. So that's going to be my pick, Joe Stevenson versus unanimous decision. All right, on to the next fight, Jim Miller versus Charles, uh, Charles Oliveira. Uh, Jim Miller, a uh, black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, good wrestling base, good boxing, um, very, very good uh, inside of the uh, pocket. He's able to you know move side to side very well, has very good footwork. Um, Charles Oliveira is a talented um, brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, pretty good Muay Thai. Um, you know, he's dangerous not only from his top, his top game, but his bottom game as well from the bottom, likes going for triangle chokes, arm bars. Um, he's very, very, uh, slick, uh, when it comes with his, uh, comes to his bottom game, um, with his BJJ. Um, <clears throat> I really think that if Jim Miller keeps this standing, I think he should be able to have the advantage here. Oliveira does have, um, and should have the reach advantage in this fight. But Miller does have, you know, uh, good footwork. He's able to slip in and out of the pocket very efficiently and pop the jab out there. Um, I don't think he's going to look to take Oliveira down maybe um, until the last few seconds of every round. He's going to try to avoid, I think, going down to the ground with Oliveira. He doesn't want to get put into any uh, precarious situations or getting caught in any submissions. Uh, I think that Miller will look to keep this standing, use his boxing, uh, pick apart, and be technical against Oliveira. And I think Miller will either win via unanimous decision or he may even catch Oliveira with a TKO. But I'm going to go with my gut. I think Miller wins a UD in this one. Uh, just keep the fight standing. Uh, you know, Keep the distance. Use good footwork. Uh, use the good jab. And I think Miller should be able to take this one. So that's my pick, Jim Miller, via unanimous decision. Um, if he, for some reason, though, you know, does try to go for takedowns um, you know, towards the end of the round to kind of solidify those rounds... There is a possibility, again, like I said, Oliveira is very slick from the bottom, uh, that he could catch Miller in something, but I think Miller takes a UD in this one. Uh, Sean McCorkle versus Stefan Struve. Uh, McCorkle's last fight uh, was against Mark Hunt, ended up pulling off, if I remember right, a sub in that fight. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, Pretty good hands, pretty good uh, ground game uh, with his top game and his bottom game. Uh, decent takedown defense. Uh, he's taking on Stefan Struve, who is a, uh, a monster as far as his height is concerned and his reach. Um, he's got good kickboxing, very, very good leg kicks, um, you know, a decent uh, top game. His bottom game is primarily where he's the most dangerous. Um, he does go for submissions from there. Um, I, I think Struve has, um, number one, the reach advantage in this fight, but I also think he has um, uh, more of the technical striking. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think that Struve should be able to pick McCorkle apart in this fight. Uh, if it does go down to the ground, Struve is very, very talented as far as his grappling. I think he should have the advantage there as well. So I think as far as this fight is concerned, when you look at the reach, you look at um, the kickboxing that Struve brings to the table, I think he's going to be able to keep the distance, um, you know, pick his shots against McCorkle, and I think he is going to stop McCorkle. Uh, I'm going to pick a late first, early second round TKO for Stefan Struve. I think he should be able to win this fight. Um, He's got the reach advantage. He should be able to keep the distance to avoid getting taken down and to pick his shots, and I think that is what will happen in this fight. So that is my pick, Stefan Struve via a late first, early second round TKO. All right, on to the main event. Uh, George St. Pierre versus Josh Koscheck, of course, coming off of the Ultimate Fighter as coaches for the 170-pound um, welterweight title uh, in the UFC. Two of the best in mixed martial arts as far as the welterweight division is concerned. Um... A lot of people have gone back and forth on this fight and said that Koscheck in the first fight wasn't prepared for GSP's wrestling. He wasn't prepared uh, for what uh, GSP brought as far as mixing his striking in with his wrestling. And now, you know, uh, somehow in this fight he will be prepared for that. Um, and when I say that, uh, that was kind of a preface statement, if you will. Because I really don't think that Josh Koscheck, even as explosive as he is, is able to um, deal with... Uh, St. Pierre's striking to wrestling uh, transfer, and GSP does it so well. Koscheck has talked about, you know, he's going to knock GSP out, he's going to keep this fight standing, he's not going to let GSP take him down. You know, it's going to be difficult for Josh in this fight to be able to, one, compensate for, you know, being able to keep GSP from striking with him, and then as GSP is striking going and going for a takedown, Koscheck's going to have a difficult time, I think, being able to time that. He said that he's going to be able to do that. And, you know, in this fight, if he can prove most of the people wrong that have said that he will not be able to do this, that will be very impressive and will go to show that, um, you know, he 
He did improve in that area. He is able to do that and could be one of the guys at 170 pounds that takes over and is one of the new uh, torch carriers um, as far as the welterweight division is concerned, not only in the UFC but in mixed martial arts. Um, we know what George St. Pierre is good at. He's a very talented grappler um, with his top game. Um, he's a you know brown belt, not only in um, or brown belt, a black belt in BJJ, a black belt in uh, Kaokushin Karate. Um, he's you know very talented with the striking. He's one of the best practitioners of wrestling in mixed martial arts that there is in the world. Uh, he's able to do that so well with mixing his striking and with his wrestling, and that's why he's so dynamic and so difficult to stop is because of how many tools he brings. Cost check, uh, decent hands, um, you know, does have power in both. He has been improving with his boxing and his leg kicks. Uh, you know, Division one wrestler, very explosive, is able to get guys down with powerful takedowns. Um, but really, you know, in this fight, I just don't, you know, I, I've played this fight. I've tried to see where can Koscheck improve from their previous fight. I went back and watched that fight from, I believe it was UFC 74, uh, the same card where Randy uh, Couture took on Gabe Gonzaga. Um, and I just don't see where, when Koscheck was trying to defend takedowns, um, you know, against GSP mixing in his striking, he still wasn't able to do it in that fight and knew he was going to get taken down. And I don't see where that is going to change in this fight. I really don't. I think GSP will be able to do what he did in the first fight and do that exact same strategy for five rounds. Um, do I think he's going to be able to stop Josh Koscheck? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Um, he wasn't able to pull off any subs against Josh in the first fight. Josh is very um, tough to submit. Uh, he does have uh, pretty good submission defense. You know, and I, I think the GSP will try to keep dominant positions, try to go for um, you know some ground and pound here and there. But I don't think that GSP is going to try to make any mistakes and allow Koscheck to get any advantageous positions against him. I think GSP is going to look to mix in his striking, clinch, mix in his striking, look for takedowns, and try to get advantageous positions. And if something presents itself, go for it. Um, GSP could pull off a submission in this one, but I'm seeing a unanimous decision for George St. Pierre. I think this is going to look much like the first fight. Um, Koscheck could have a little bit you know, more tools to bring to the table, but I think GSP just has got more tools. Um, he's the more superior fighter as far as the wrestling is concerned in mixed martial arts at this stage of the game. If Josh Koscheck and GSP got together and wrestled tomorrow just a wrestling match, George St. Pierre would probably lose. But as far as MMA is concerned, GSP just has, I think, more tools. So that's my pick, George St. Pierre, via unanimous decision to retain the welterweight title. So those are my picks for UFC 124. Leave some comments, construct a negative positive. I'll be back uh, hopefully the night over the night after to do a review. And you guys, take it easy. My friend Cassandra Jessica wanna play ball